Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Don Doby or The Adventures of a Leolian Elf by Dale Perry is a simple tale of a faithful elf who is imprisoned for his ugliness. A book based in a fantasy world but teaches real-life lessons called Inspiring, Delightful, and Entertaining, a vivid, magical, and meaningful story for the young and young at heart. Dale is a longtime <coughs> veteran of theater. He stopped the boards from Boston to Hollywood, New York City, and in between. A member of the Roundabout Theater Ensemble in New York City, where he acted and directed, toured with theater groups and performed in summer stock, regional, and educational theater, Dale has studied classical theater in London and Dublin and at the Institute for Advanced Studies in Theater Arts in New York City. Studied speech and drama at the University of New Hampshire, where he graduated cum laude. While there, he won a Best Actor Award. Dale also received an MA in Theater Arts from UNLV, graduating with honors. A member of SAG-AFTRA, Actors' Equity, and the Stagehands Union. Always enjoyed entertaining children and, in fact, toured with a theater group out of Boston that performed literary classics like Edgar Allan Poe's works for school kids and a recent role in the Academy Award-nominated Don't Look Up. And now, the author of the critically acclaimed Don Doby or The Adventures of a Leolian Elf, Dale Perry, our guest on This Week in America. Hi, Dale. Welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Well, thank you kindly. I'm happy to be here. Such a great book that you've written here. So much to talk about. I want to start, first of all, with the inspiration for this story and then get into the how the characters will develop, were developed, a fascinating story there. But what was the inspiration? Where did this whole idea for this wild, uh, mystical universe that you created, where did the, all of this come from? Well, it's out of the universe, I guess. <clears throat> I used to live up in Montana, and along the Yellowstone River, I'd go walking through the woodside. And I one day was out there listening in the spring, and I hear this echoing, Dondaby, Dondaby. <laughs> I don't know if it was Dondaby, but it sounded like Dondaby. Yes. Somebody was calling somebody. And as the days went on, it, it kept sticking with me. And I, and I began to think about different things. And it could have been a little else in that woods. So I started putting my family into uh, in the story, and it just it evolved from there. I'll start here in a second and talk about the characters because the family played a big role in, in development of the characters. The book is Dondobe, and that's D-O-N-D-O-B-E-E, or The Adventures of a Leolian Elf. Leolian is L-E-O-L-I-A-N. Dale Perry is the guest, the author. That's P-A-R-R-Y. His website is mrdale.com. Book available at amazon.com, all of the usual places, litprime.com as well. We'll give you all all that several times throughout the uh, the conversation today. It's all on our website, so you can go and, and get information on Dale, get information on the book. I want to talk a second about the writing style. It really is effortless. It's been described as lucid, has a natural flow to it. Talk about the writing style, because it really is distinctive. How did you develop this style? Well, uh, I live on a philosophy of simplify, clarify, and economize. Uh, <laughs> one of the great writers apologized for writing such a long letter because he didn't have time to write a short one. So when you write, <laughs> I'd like to find the right words that express what I want and describe with an accumulation of detail, but not so much that people get lost and they say, oh, forget about it. I can't bother with reading this stuff. But basically, that's it. It's, a, it's just being succinct. Well, it, and it's a very visual way that you write. In reading reviews, people feel like, I, I know where that is. I, I can see these characters as Dale is describing them in the book. Where do you get some of the, the story ideas for your writing, in particular uh, the book Down to Be? Where do some of the ideas come from? You mentioned where you got the, the main idea. You thought it could have been an elf that was saying Down to Be to you. How did how did you flesh yeah. that? How did you flesh that out with the rest of the ideas for the story? 
Well, that's a good question. Uh, basically, I respond either emotionally in my reactions to an event or a, an expression or something. But I imagine it as being very uh, not good to look at, relatively ugly. And then I think that within ugliness is also great beauty. Yes. And people sometimes just see the surface and they don't go inside and see what's really there. And Don DeBee was a little elf and he was very magical and he did a lot of things and uh, relatively harmless and uh, basically devolved from there. My grandson, Leo, who became head of the Aeolian elf, was kind of the epitome of him because he was always getting into things and and I compared him to Leo so I figured from there I go to the family my wife his grandmother my kids my other grandchildren and I started writing around them and their personalities and it just evolved into the the story of well, it's more complicated than uh, I want to get into, but the prince and prince, uh, Prince Paul and Princess Quinella, they are uh, my grandkids, and uh, the other characters in it are basically um, names that yes. I gave them, and uh, it just evolved from there. Love the characters and the story. The book is Don DeBee or the Adventures of a Laolian Elf by Dale Perry, our guest on the program. Perry is P-A-R-R-Y. How much fun was that to write uh, stories based on the people that are living with you, some of them, in, in the houses you're writing this? And how much fun was it for them to know that you were putting the story together using their their characteristics to develop the characters in the book? That had to be a great experience, a, a family bonding experience. Experience. Well, uh, I don't think anybody really knew what I was writing. Ah, I, didn't okay. get, I didn't tell anybody what I was writing until it was done. I was living in Las Vegas. <clears throat> Subsequently, we moved from Montana to Las Vegas. Where I, <clears throat> excuse me. All of a sudden, I can't talk. Uh, <laughs> where we lived for 35 years together. And uh, my uh, stepchildren were involved in the poker world there. And so I didn't really get uh, much to see them. But um, they really didn't have much input to, with it. Well, it's fascinating how the story all came about. The book is Don Debate. You'll find it wherever books are sold. Dale's website, a lot of great information there. You can order actually an autographed copy of the book at his website, mrdale.com. Let's talk a little that's, bit. That's, that's MR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. MRDale.com, MrDale.com. And all of this is on our website. You can go there and you can actually click on and get information. Let's talk about the writing process. What were some of the challenges? And I, I'm thinking of one is you've got this really entertaining story. And you're trying to hold the attention of, uh, of a younger audience, but the book's designed for young at heart, as I mentioned as well. And at the same time, having some messages in there. You've got some, some real life lessons that you're teaching. Talk about the, your writing style and, and writing this particular book and any challenges in presenting an entertaining book that, that's very meaningful as well. Well, um, I do have a philosophy of life, I guess, that basically do unto others and you have them do unto you. And um, somehow people help other people. And some in my story, Ponella, who is the princess, is a little greedy and she wants to take over the castle and everything that's in it. And so one day, uh, Don Deby is out doing his thing, uh, creating, uh, cleaning the house magically, filling the closets with clothes and the pantry with food and whatever. And Penella is uh, sleepwalking. She sees him and is frightened by him. She tells her husband, Prince Paul, to get rid of him and put him in the dungeon, which he does. 
unfortunately, they took away all the magic, so all the things that they were used to no longer oh, yes. uh, happen. And uh, they suddenly discovered that it doesn't work that way. You don't get something for nothing. And the whole thing just crumbles. And they go back home, and I, they live happily ever after. After ever, after, after <laughs> trying to, to uh, trying to uh, be better people. Well, the book is available, as I say, wherever books are sold. Don Dobe, D O N D O B E E, Mr. Dale, M R Dale dot com is uh, Dale Perry's website. The author P A R R Y. Let's talk a little bit about just for a second on Cole, uh, another character, and this invention of a unique musical instrument, which is a, a key storyline in the book. How did that develop? Well, uh, I sort of took old King Cole, the merry old soul, and uh, <laughs> made him a little boy called Cole because he looked dirty. He was dirty. He lived. He was an urchin who just went around town, but he was a very imaginative urchin. And he one day heard music in his head and he saw a particular musical instrument, which he went about and created. And eventually it was so beautiful that everyone loved it and couldn't live without it. And Don Bebe's mother and father, Shreebi and Rhoda, see it, hear it, love it. They want to dance. And because they're magical elves, they create a great castle for him and vow to be uh, with him for the rest of his lives and give him everything he wants. Uh, basically, that's Story. Yeah, it. and as you're telling the story, it's it's visual in 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 storytelling even more so when you're reading the book Don to Be again available wherever books are sold. You mentioned that a number of these characters are based on family members. Is there any one particular character that's maybe reflective of of Dale Perry? Well, <laughs> it could be James Edward who actually is my son, James Edward Parry. Uh, but James Edward is a man of his word. He promised Ponella that he would make her a beautiful pearl necklace, and she wasn't happy with it, so he went throughout the world to find the best pearls that he could find. And eventually he came back, and he actually rescues uh, them from the castle uh, uh, crumbling down with them in it. And I, I think uh, James Edward, he ultimately becomes a wizard through the help of uh, Don Dizzy. So I think I probably identify with him a bit. When you write books, and Don Debe in particular, are there things that you find as you go through the process? Maybe, maybe it changes from book to book. What are some of the surprising things you find as you're writing a book? Well, the most exciting thing is that I don't know what I'm going to write until I write it. <laughs> but most, of it, yeah, most of it comes from someplace. I don't know where you want to call it. I, I, I depend on the, the thoughts that come through my brain as I think upon the particular situation I'm in. And um, it evolves from there. Each character is introduced because of a need in the scene for someone like that. So I pick this person and I give it a name. The sense maker was very helpful in solving the riddle that he had to solve, that Penella and Paul had to solve in order to get into the castle. Uh, and he sort of had a list and talked like this, if they, um, but, um, I chose my grandson uh, for that uh, because he was, he's a great kid and he's very smart and he knows what he's doing and he, he loves words and, and riddles. So he became the sense maker. Interesting how this process all evolved. You mentioned Riddle. A riddle plays a very important part in the story of Don to be there. There's so many levels where this book just uh, just excels. What do you think makes a good story as someone who's 
uh, written stories, obviously, someone who's performed stories, classics, as well as probably from, from new writers. What, what makes a good story? Uh, basically, I wonder what's going to happen next. Uh, yes. Yep. It's the, the, the mystery of the story, the uh, building up to uh, the, the climax and the conclusion. That, that keeps me going. What's going to happen? How is this person affecting that person? And, you know, what's the end result of this? And that's why I, I like to write succinctly so that we don't drag it all out. Let's get to the point. <laughs> Well, you, you have a talent. You have a talent for that, and obviously, you've probably seen that over the years in reading scripts. Sometimes it's like, my God, I could have said this in like half the time and been even more effective in holding the the audience's attention. But you've got a way of of writing succinctly. How long did it take? You mentioned that you sort of like sit down and and, and the ideas come to you. How long did it take to write Don to be from the time you you heard the possible elf in Montana to when you you finished and the the book was ready for publica- for publication? How long did that take you? Well, over time, I didn't really dedicate myself to writing it because there would be insights that I would get through the day. It's always there in my mind. Yes. And uh, an event would happen in the family and I would, uh, well, that, that sounds good. I'll try to put that there in it. Uh, it took about maybe six months to seven months after moving from Montana back to Las Vegas. Um, I had more time to sit and write and think about things. With us on the program is Dale Perry. That's P-A-R-R-Y. The book we're talking about is Don Dobe, D-O-N-D-O-B-E-E, or The Adventures of the Leolian Elf. That's L-E-O-L-I-A-N. All of this on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Very easy to remember, mrdale.com, his website, mrmrdale.com. Book at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all the usual places, litprime.com as well. And again, all of this is uh, is on our website. You've got this amazing insight, and I want to talk about this. You've presented plays to all types of audiences, older audiences, younger audiences. You toured and, and presented plays in schools. Is there a special affection you have for a, a young audience? You do this book so well. You write on their level. You capture their attention, which isn't always easy to do with a younger crowd like that. Does that go back to uh, this attraction, this affection you had when you were traveling doing the, uh, the Edgar Allan Poe works? Well, I'll tell you, if you ever want to have an experience, uh, we traveled to uh, high schools <clears throat> all over uh, the, the southern part of the United States, and you get a thousand kids in one auditorium. Oh, wow. And you're, you're acting on stage, and all you hear is popcorn crunching out there, <laughs> and they're throwing things around. And trying to keep their attention as you're doing it is a lot of fun, but their kids are kids are kids, and I always enjoyed using that that enthusiasm that I, that they have in teaching them theater. Uh, I did some summer uh, summer uh, theater with kids before, but I like enjoy their their energy, their their imagination. I, they're great. Yeah, and you can learn from them too if you're just sort of observant and uh, and suddenly you're learning from this uh, from this group that you're performing in, in front of. Uh, a couple minutes left in the program. I want to talk about basically what you're doing now. A lot of I mentioned the the don't look up the role you had in that uh, the the highly praised picture. Are, how active are you now, and are you working on another book? Well, I'm not very active. I'm along uh, in years. I think I told you I'm 83 years old. Young. And I recently moved from Vegas to here. But a couple, two, three years back, I was, I'm was. i also a master carpenter and technical director. And I did some work up in Vermont and uh, northern Massachusetts as a master carpenter technical director for theater. So I've pretty much got out of performing and doing what I really do enjoy is carpentry, designing, building uh, theater sets 
and whatever. But I'm not doing much of anything right now. Well, what an amazing career Edwin Dale is talking about where he is now. He's uh, he's back in the uh, in the Boston area. You know, it's interesting when we talked before. You were saying this was a great book for parents to read to their kids, but you say, unlike you sort of go through the motions sometimes as a parent reading a book, you can really get very animated in reading this, and you probably should to make this effective, shouldn't you? Well, I think you should read it aloud because there's so many characters with so many different voices. Yes. We are in the process of making a an audio tape of it, so it, that might be fun. But I I think it's one book to to read aloud. Uh, I think the images are great, and they they probably can uh, be created in the minds of these kids and and uh, have have fun. Um, but I like it. It reads well. Well, it, it really does. The book is receiving excellent reviews. Again, it's available basically wherever books are sold, but I'll make it easy. Of course, it's at Amazon. You could remember that. And go to Dale's website, MrMRDale.com. Information on uh, Dale's background, how this whole story all came about. And you can, of course, order the book there, an autographed copy of the book as well at Dale's website, and all of this will be on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Uh, Dale, any advice out there for people that are, are thinking of writing a book? Maybe they've got a story inspired similar to what you went through and think, I've got this story. I really don't know how to go about writing it and, and, and taking it from there. Any advice to first-time authors? Well, yeah, don't give up. Uh, I, think uh, yes. that the writing, I think writing is really great, but... There's also an element that I find interesting is that the universe will help you. It comes in and gives you the information that you need or that particular situation that you want to develop and just listen to what comes in. Uh, basically, that's what was I, I was basically doing that. Uh, and I, it, it worked out. Just don't give up. Did that help as a, as an actor as well as you're trying to develop this character, maybe sort of let uh, your mind open and over a, a period of time, maybe that character develops in, in a way you didn't expect. That's true. Yep. That's true. Um, I, I find that as an actor, when you, when you, when you create this character, this personage in, within you, you take on, that and it comes almost naturally yes from where i not know but it it comes so don't give up well those are the words to live by and the, this book is done so well at a number of different levels and again it's for the young and the young at heart the book is don to that's d-o-n-d-o-b-e-e -E, or the adventures of the leolian elf the book is by our guest dale perry p-a-r-r-y his website mr dale.com mr is m-r book available amazon usual places and all of this information on our website this week at america.us dale a pleasure having you on the program congratulations on the success of what an amazing career that you've had and uh, don to be the, the the latest thank you so much for being with us on the program well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. It is our pleasure. Dale Perry, author of Don to Be or the Adventures of the Leolian Elf, the book available at uh, all the usual places. Find out more on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.